All right, so we'll, uh, coming up in a bit, we'll be taking a look at education in prisons and particularly rehabilitation of youth in correctional services. Often, when I see anybody, a personnel in uniform, you never know what the proper protocol is, how to greet, whether you salute, you curtsy, <laughs> and <laughs> Marion Johnson, uh, and uh, she, she's here this morning. Will you explain your epaulets? What, what, what's the, uh, the bling on top of your epaulets there? Okay, I'm, the, I'm a deputy director in the Department of Correctional Services, responsible for curriculum management, formal education. Okay. okay. And, and all these, these buttons there on top of your, of your shoulders, yeah. do they stand for anything? Yeah, this is for a deputy director. Okay. okay. So is that like having top honours? <laughs> <laughs> a super achiever. But thanks, thanks indeed, Marian. So we'll talk about youth in prisons in a bit. Yeah, such an important topic, in fact. Um, I, I mean, it's supposedly that an, education, an educated person would be a more law-abiding person. And prison is a time to reflect, but it's also a time to change your life as well. So mm -hmm. uh, it is definitely a very important topic, and uh, we'll be chatting about a very short while. An interesting story on the front page of the Star now, Mark and I had a quick chat about it, that uh, in the money collected from e-tolling, I mean, you see we are back on this e-tolling, over the yeah. next two years, in fact, 70% of it will be used to collect the income, uh, to collect the tolling, and then there'll be nothing left after maintenance to actually pay off for the rebuilding of the roads. So that was very interesting. Yeah, so 70% of, of the money that will be made yes. is going to, to be used for recovery. Yep. Administrative costs, in uh, other okay. words. Yeah. All right. And, so and the fact that people are just <laughs> saying they're not going to pay, how do you feel about the ETO? And of course, you can't say you can't have an e <laughs> You have there to was, be on the right side of the There was a pause there. Yeah, well, she, she put you on the spot. But we'll be chatting to you about <laughs> education. That's your forte yeah. in yeah. a short while. It Well, it's 6.23 a.m. Thanks again for joining us on Sunrise. Now, education offered through our prison system prepares offenders for reintegration into society, and uh, it gives them something to contribute to the community, in fact. And to discuss the benefits and the challenges associated with prison education and various programs, we are joined by Marion Johnson, the head. In fact, uh, it's the curriculum. She is the curriculum manager of the Correctional Services Formal Education Desk. You at home can be a part of the discussion. Give us a call on 011 537 9333 or 9345. There's also our Facebook page and our Twitter account as well. Marion, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're having a very interesting discussion before we came on air, I think perhaps you can start out by, by sharing what the process is when, when someone gets convicted and they, they sent to prison, uh, there really is from that point in time steps taken or there are steps taken to ensure that they would be rehabilitated, that they can get back into society and live a normal life after that. Yes, thank you. As soon as a person enters the correctional centre, he or she is assessed and if they have a sentence of 24 months or longer, they are assessed to determine their needs, especially their development needs. But before you can assess a person's development needs, you must first look at his basic needs, mm. like his health needs, if he needs any uh, health related, uh, if he has a health related uh, problem, mm. he is attended to. After a while, he will then be assessed to determine his development needs, development needs insofar as education and training. And if he does have a qualification in education, he is placed appropriately. Mm -hmm. If he does not have a qualification, he is assessed to determine his level of, level of education. Mm. And then he is placed either in the literacy or she is placed in the literacy program for people who cannot read and write or in the ABET or uh, adult education and mm. training program or in NCV, National Certificate Vocational, the levels four, two to four, uh, equal to the FET colleges. We also have colleges in our correctional centres or and we also offer grades 10 to 12 at identified correctional centres for youth. And uh, uh, this, this, the particular focus of our interview would be on youth and, and we're just mentioning that it's difficult to give correct numbers but it's an alarming uh, amount of our youth that are sitting in correctional services yes. or, or correctional institutions in fact. Yes. So who, who actually conducts the, the assessments? Is yeah. it a, a panel of, of, of um, assessors or how is it done? Yeah, at the correctional centre mm -hmm. there's a panel that assess the offender mm. and then after the assessment he or she is then referred to the necessary person that will address the, we call it the professionals. Mm. They are uh, referred to a social worker, to a health worker, to a nurse or to a doctor if he or she needs to see that uh, doctor and then educationist as well. We have qualified 
professionals in correctional services. And, and is this done immediately? Is, there, is this after they've sort of settled in or when exactly does this take place? Correctional centres across the country have different time frames mm. depending on the level of overcrowding that they are having as well as the level of there's a schedule that they are having within the correctional centre. Mm. So it determine, is determined by the schedule of that, the, the case management committee, when oh, an offender will mm. see the, the team now. And how long is the actual assessment? The assessment, it can take up to half an hour, okay. depending on the nature of of the interview. Okay, we are chatting to Marion Johnson, Johnson and she is the um, curriculum manager um, at the Correctional Services Formal Education Desk and we'd love to hear from you. What do you think about uh, or do you have any experience or knowledge of uh, prison education programs? You can give us a call on 011 rather 537 or 9345. How, what is the response of, of an inmate to the assessment number one and then to the various programs? Are they initially uh, receptive to the idea of being involved in a rehabilitation program? Let us also be honest, when you enter a correctional centre, you are very shocked. Yes. You Sometimes you are shocked because you can't believe that it finally happened, happened. or they finally caught you, and then you have to get through that initial shock. Mm. And um, in the beginning, people are reluctant. My experience showed me, uh, t taught me that people are reluctant to join the programs. But later on, when they start trusting the environment again, mm. they would come out and they will join the programs. Mm. Come out themselves to say that I'm willing to participate in a specific program. They even correct the information that they give during the initial assessment. I'm sure. Yeah, because people will indicate that they are literate and during assessment, when now when they realize this thing, you are going to be tested, mm. uh, your literacy level will be determined, then they realize, no, let us, let me rather come and get, mm. give them the, the true reflection of who I really am. Okay, we're going to continue the discussion with Marion Johnson. In fact, find out what the various programs are, how are they funded, the accreditation that is available. Uh, for now, though, we have to go to an ad break and then Mark Chase obviously is standing by. But uh, before we do go there, a reminder that you can get involved in the discussion, 011 or 9345. We'd love to hear from you. So start calling us and then get onto our Facebook page and our Twitter account as well. Um, and we'll see you in a very short while. Do stay with us on Sunrise. We, con uh, we continue our discussion on education for inmates and some of your comments coming through that will field to Marion Johnson. She's the head of formal education and correctional services. We wanted to know from you, do you think it is important for inmates to get tertiary education as part of their rehabilitation process? Confido says they've got the right to education. Most people who are from prison and the ones who make are the ones who make it in life. Once they're out, they tell themselves that they have to make it and they surely do. An example is Kenny Gunene. Magoro says, big no, some of these children start failing at school after being raped or abused, referring to the victims, and uh, she says, or he says that the perpetrator is then given a rich life in education. Tapelo says, yes, yes it's important, because some inmates are going to change their lifestyles and others went to jail for nothing. A uh, quick one from Regal, Regan says, well, it is a great strategy for rehabilitation and change in inmates' lives. Some people still suffer from getting tertiary education outside of prison and this gives me the idea that those who can't get tertiary education outside of prison will sooner or later do wrong for a better education. Shirley says I don't think so because even with that education in the palm of their hands they are still going to repeat the same offense that uh, brought them to prison in the first place. So maybe Marion can respond to those comments. Yes, thanks, Cindy. Just a correction there. Marion Johnson is the curriculum manager of uh, the Correctional Services Formal Education Desk. Uh, Marion, some interesting points coming through from our Facebook page. Uh, a reminder, though, to give us a call 011 or 9345. In fact, Marion, before I give you an opportunity to answer that question, we do have a call on the line. Sina is calling us from Johannesburg. Good morning. Sina, can you hear me? I'm okay, and you. Yes. I, I just want. I just okay, wanted to check with the director that since well there is this ORP program that are running the programs with the social worker, is the department also having youth developers who are assisting the social worker to develop the young people in their department? Mm, um, I don't know if you'd, if you'd like to answer that while Sina's on the line. Uh, Sina, I want to refer you to um, you are talking about social workers. 
We are. Okay, no. Yes, you, you know. know I, wanted, I wanted to check if your department are having youth developers who are working to develop young people so you mean in your centers. Are youngsters um, or, or youth coming alongside the department and assisting in the rehabilitation um, it, of yeah, youth? Yeah, in... qualified youth developers. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you know, un un unfortunately, I don't have that information with me right now. I can't, cannot answer you, but you can make contact with our national head office, the HR division, mm. to find out whether that service is available in correctional services. All right, and we'll give you the contact details um, at the end of the interview, Senna, so if you can uh, continue listening to the show. And then we do have Reggie, he's calling us from Boxburg. Good morning, Reggie. Good morning, Madam. how are you? I'm great, thank you. I'm great. Do you have a question for Marion this morning? Yes, I do. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, my question is one. Mm. In terms of the government of this country, now, if an image has been educated and then comes back into the society and been integrated into the society, mm. as much as I've been working for the government for the past 23 years, and I know for the fact that they don't take anybody with criminal records. So now, how do we, how do we uh, do now? Now they are here, they've got all the qualification, now they cannot be employed because the government doesn't want people with criminal records. Now, my suggestion was, it's better if they're being taught maybe to do technical jobs, jobs that they can do on their own, so yeah. that they can be able to do their own businesses, yeah. so that they cannot depend on the government, because the criminal records is the problem. Yeah. Uh, Reggie, you, you, br you bring up a very important point, in fact, and this is what we're talking about, reintegration reintegra uh, into society, uh, acceptance from the society as a whole, not yeah. just family. Uh, many people want to hide the fact that yeah. they were in prison, even though they do have jobs, for example. They, their employers might know that they were in prison, but uh, staff members don't know as well. How do we handle that? How do we prepare the inmate for that? Yes, let, me, let us go back to Reggie's question. Yeah. I do understand what Reggie meant by that. We are offering technical courses like plumbing, mm. bricklaying, uh, various technical courses, short courses, which is called skill, in the world of work, it's called skills development courses. And those courses are then coupled with entrepreneurial training. Mm. The entrepreneurial training enables the person who participated in the course to start his or own business so that he or she is not dependent on other people mm. to create a job for him or herself. Mm. We are even focusing on ICT skills. Okay. Like in Kimberley, we have um, an ICT workshop where people were taught on how to, comp how to fix computers okay. so that ultimately they can create their own work. Is it not limiting though? Because I, I would assume that if you're training in any form of um, computer training, you would need nowadays in order to be competent, you'd need access to the internet, but you can't provide that to an inmate. How does that work? Where's, where does where do you strike the balance? Okay, when we come now back to computer, there are different levels of computer training. Yeah. Remember, it's uh, computer basic literacy. Okay. And then you also have c computer technician training okay. that is uh, equal to an, uh, it's an ICT training. You don't need access to the internet during the training phase. Maybe the ma for the manuals, for the training manuals, you need ex exit. Mm. But that training manuals is presented by a qualified technician mm. or by instructor. Mm. Can I also come back to you? We are working with partnerships with various departments. I Department of Communication, mm. which sponsored us with funds to train offenders in basic computer literacy as well as computer technicians. Okay. So we are working with partnerships with other departments to reach those goals, to assist Reggie and Reggie's friends to find work, yeah. ultimately. I suppose I'm just thinking that there, there is a certain amount of, or a certain element of risk, but just so that we, we get as much information out of the interview, tell us about the various programs that are on offer, and then uh, the Facebook comment that came through, um, so it's a two-part question, I'll remind you of the second one if you do forget, that some people go into prison to obtain an education because it's difficult for them to get it outside. Is that true? Is it a fallacy, a myth? <laughs> okay. I w uh, it depends on how you look at it. Okay. Um, if the public wants to believe that, it's very sad. People come into prison because they offended the community or the society. And when they came to in contact with correctional services and the officials, then they realize what is really available in correctional services. Okay. You are sitting, we are sitting with overcrowding. So in correctional services, our classes are not looking like the classes outside. Mm. But coming back to the programs, we do offer for the people who cannot read and write, we do offer basic 
literacy programs through the Harikude campaign, the mass literacy campaign, working with the Department of Basic Education. Then we are offering ABET, mm. working with the Department of Higher Education, offering ABET levels 1, 2, 3 and 4, equal to GETC certificate, which is equal to grade 9, ABET level 4. Okay. Many adults outside are doing the same program. Yeah. Um, yes, we are not sitting with the same challenges that the outside world is facing with, but you are incarcerated. Remember, your movement are restricted. Your yeah. thinking is restricted to many times only to wars. Mm. Uh, some of the challenges that we spoke during the break is that our female offenders are not as participate. They do not participate mm. as eagerly as our mm. male offenders would. I'm so sorry to break your word, Marion, but unfortunately we have run out of time and okay. I would have loved to go into that because it really is fascinating. And then another uh, point that you mentioned uh, just off air that I can inform our viewers on is that uh, the programs are accredited as well yeah. because that's what assists in reintegration, in fact, into society as well. But Marion, thank you so much for joining us. Perhaps we can bring you back and discuss it at, uh, in length um, uh, on another occasion. But uh, we have been chatting to Marion Johnson, the head of, in fact, the curriculum manager of formal education desk at the Correctional Services Department and uh, you can contact the department in fact on 012-571-2298 that number should be on your screen it is and then the uh, website is www.dcc.gov.za thanks again for joining us we'll see you in a very short while